Hello out there, and today we're going to be wrapping up the give a knife, take a knife pass around. And this is something that I started a couple months ago where I took a box of five knives, all of which were in the $40 to $50 price range, let's say, and I sent it out around the country to a number of buddies of mine in the community, you know, people who I met either through this channel or on Instagram, and basically what each person did when they got the box was they spent a couple days with the knives that were in there, and then they chose one to add to their collection, and then they replaced it with something that, from their collection to put back into the box and send it on to the next person. And this made for just a, a lot of fun in terms of everybody not really knowing what was going to be in the box when it came to them. And yeah, just built a lot of camaraderie. It was a good experience overall. I think the guys had a lot of fun. And for me, my part, just being on the outside of it looking in, I had a blast just uh, communicating with everybody and, and sort of being privy to the decision-making process that they were going through as to which knife should I keep, which knife should I put back in, you know, and some of the guys really struggled with it a little bit and it was a, yeah, it was a fun experience. So first of all, thank you to all of them for being involved with this. I will link to them down below, whether it's a, uh, a YouTube channel, an Instagram page, whatever it is, but the goal here, the long-term goal is to do this on a larger level, you know, and on a more permanent basis. And these guys have really helped me set the groundwork for the parameters that I want to put into this uh, moving forward. So, so thanks again to, uh, to all those guys. But what we're going to be doing today is just going through all the knives that came back to me. Because um, I started with five going out and I have five coming back. And we're going to go through um, who picked what and who put what back in. And maybe a little bit of why here and there. And yeah, it should be a, a pretty fun video, especially since I have a bunch of new knives that I'm going to get to check out. At least four of them out of the five. This one, not so much. And so let's get into that. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, the original video, I will link to that down below so you can check it out and, and get caught up if some of this isn't really making much sense. But um, the five knives that I started the whole thing out with, the five that I sent out to begin it, were the Steel Will Tenet, the Tuya Bruiser, the Kershaw Knockout, the Boker Lancer, and then this one right here, the CRKT Ruger RTD. And of the five knives, only one of them wasn't chosen, and it was this one right here, the Ruger. Um, so seven guys had the opportunity to take this knife, and they all picked something else, which is fine. And it really doesn't bum me out at all, because uh, this was actually brand new when I started the thing out, and so I never really carried it, and, and now it's come back to me, and... Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to be doing a review on this one. Um, it's an interesting piece, field strip technology. You know, I wanted to put something in the box that was just a little bit different that maybe would call to somebody for a particular reason. And, you know, a, a blacked out knife with field strip technology, Matthew Lurch design. Yeah, I, I think it's a pretty cool one. And yeah, of the, uh, of the field strip knives I've handled, this one is actually the best too. So I'm definitely going to be talking about this one more in the future. So excited about that. But now let's get into what people actually chose and put back in, the knives that are, are new to me. And there are four of those, and we're going to be going through this chronologically, because Stasa23 started a, a paper, he was the first one with the box, he started a paper where he wrote, um, you know, what he picked and, and what he replaced it with, and so we're just going to go through that, and yeah, let's just start. Stasa23 writes, and man, <laughs> okay, I feel like Casey Kasem, dear Casey, um, I took the Steel Will Tenet and replaced it with the Best Tech Warwolf. And guys, please don't comment that you don't know who Casey Kasem is because it will really, really make me feel old. Don't do that. I took the Steel Will Tenet and replaced it with the Best Tech Warwolf. All right, so the first knife gone was the Steel Will. A little bit of a surprise there, but, you know, Stasa had owned a lot of the knives already that were in the box. And so he went with the Steel Will. And the Warwolf actually didn't make it all the way through the rest of the people. So someone else picked that. So that knife isn't here in front of me either. Uh, good luck choosing. Thanks, Nick. You know, and it just struck me as possible. I've got all these guys as uh, signatures. If any of them get famous, this might be a, a pretty valuable piece of paper one day, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no one's getting famous. You're all losers. Anyway, all right. <laughs> Next. So this got sent to the Lawn Ranger, and the Lawn Ranger writes, I took the Tuya and put in a Rake P865. Thanks, Brian. Okay, so the Lawn Ranger sends the Rake, and this is exciting, because every Rake that I've held, I've liked, and this one is no exception. It's called the P865, a really long, slim, lightweight kind of knife. 
I'm not sure what exactly the intention of the design is, to be honest. Is it tactical? Is it like large gent because it's deep carry and slim and light? Um, is it just an EDC, a, a lightweight EDC for a guy with big hands? I'm not sure. You know, it has a little bit of an Asian kind of influence, I think, to the um, to the handle shape. I really like that. Just for, for comparison, here it is next to a Benchmade 943, and it's longer than that knife. So just a long, um, slim knife. 14C28N. So, yeah, definitely a good piece and one that I am really enthusiastic about getting in the pocket. So definitely a good addition, and I'm glad it made it all the way through to the end. All right, and then from the Lawn Ranger, the box went up to Ray over at the EDCC, Everyday City Carry, and Ray writes, <laughs> I jacked the Boker Lancer and replaced it with a Kershaw Launch 4. Kind regards, Ray. So Ray's decision was a, um, a difficult one, I'm sure, because he has a lot of knife legality issues up there in New York City, and... If I remember right, he was a little bit interested in the CRKT right here, but just because of the blade size, he wasn't able to pick it and carry it legally. And thankfully, there was a knife in the box that was smaller, the Boker Lancer, a blade that I really like. So, um, yeah, happy that he was able to pick one and, and um, yeah, find something that would, would suit his uh, preferences. And he replaced it with a Kershaw Launch 4, which is also no longer in the box. The Launch 4 is the really small uh, Kershaw automatic knife. So, uh, yeah, that would have been a cool piece, but someone jumped on that, and we will get back to that. He sent the, the box from um, from where he is in New York City to uh, to the Harbor Master Jacob up there in Michigan, and Jacob writes, man, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to do it again, I promise. I took the Kershaw Knockout and added the Real Steel H6 Special Edition. Let's do this again sometime. All right, well, one, yes, we're going to do this again sometime. Two, this is a knife that I was really hoping was going to get back to me. I saw this first in Jeff Jewell's decision video, which he posted, you know, um, after after the Harbor Master got the box. So uh, he was next, and I was really hoping that no one was going to pick this knife because, man, just look at it. Of course I want to get this knife. So Real Steel Special Edition 14C28N. I'm not a big fan of orange, but just this shade of it in the G10 is just extremely attractive. Don't really like the backspacer, but whatever. Um, but just look at the blade. Just the first time I saw this on that video, I was like, man, I, I want to get this knife in hand. Uh, just a really, really um, heavy hollow grind, you know, a steep one. And then the belly of the knife just makes an interesting blade shape here. Nice big uh, thumb studs. I don't know, I'm just digging this knife. So, a lot of these knives might end up going back into a future pass round. I've got to tell you right now, this one will probably be a at least semi-permanent part of my collection. So, really stoked about that. And then Jacob took the box and sent it over to Jeff Jewell. And Jeff Jewell writes, Dear Casey. All right, sorry, I'm going to do it every time. I took the Best Tech Warwolf and replaced it with the Mini Boker Kalishnikov in S30V. So that's where the Warwolf went. And also the S30V Kalishnikov, um, that's not here either. So Jeff Jewell added another knife that, that someone else took. And then he sent it to Machete J. And Machete J put in the uh, HK Soldat, and he took the Launch 4 that Ray had put in over at the EDCC. So I took the Kershaw Launch 4, replaced it with the HK Soldat. So what is the HK Soldat? Let's take a look at this blade. This is a Benchmade made HK from a couple years back when, when Benchmade was um, having that, that HK line licensed to them. This is USA made, N680 blade steel, discontinued now. It's got a button lock. And the reason why I know so much about this knife uh, at first glance is because I actually own one myself. I have the Tanto version. It stays in my car. It's a last ditch kind of backup knife and um, never really use it. I think I've had it on camera once or twice in the last two years. So yeah, it, it just stays in the car as an emergency knife. But this is a really, really cool piece. 
And the reason for that, and, and guys, I'm, I'm saying that about every knife. I feel like these guys just know what I like and they were like catering to me or something because every one of these blades that they put in is a, uh, is a really sweet one. The most interesting aspect of this knife is just the beefiness of the handle on the Soldat. So here it is next to the 943, which is a pretty slim knife. But here it is also next to, what do we have here? Here it is next to a um, steel wheel modus. And then the best comparison is actually the, the Mini Freak. And the reason for that is that of all the knives I just showed, the Soldat is the lightest of all of them because it doesn't really have any liners. Let's see if we can get this focused. Probably not because just my luck. But yeah, if you look in if you can look inside there, you can probably see somewhat the waffling pattern. There we go. See that waffling pattern that um, Benchmade continues to use with the, the Freak models just makes it extremely lightweight. And so uh, a good tactical kind of, of knife for a, uh, a kit or just something, you know, to, uh, to have that's, that's not going to slow you down because it is so light. So um, definitely, uh, definitely a knife that, that is a very high quality one. And now that it's discontinued, a hard to find one as well. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. So, yeah, might end up reviewing it, but uh, I'm not sure. Usually I, I try to stay away from knives that are hard to, to come by when it comes to reviews. So we'll see about that. All right. And then finally, last thing uh, from Machete J, the box went to Minnesota Knife Guy. And Minnesota Knife Guy writes, Dear Casey, I took the Boker Mini Kalishnikov and replaced it with a Bastion Brasa. How was that? Good? I don't know. Whatever. But <laughs> here's a Bastion Brasa, guys. What is a Bastion Brasa? And I don't know the answer to this. I've never handled one of these knives before. I don't know anything about it. I don't know much when it comes to uh, the value of it. What I can say is that if you blindfolded me or just took the stamp Bastion off of the top here... I would think that this was a Kaiser. It feels like a Kaiser. It has incredible action like a Kaiser on bearings. S35VN, um, like a Kaiser. Titanium frame lock. I mean, this knife is in... Well, it's... I, I don't know. It's a uh, pretty... Seems like a pretty high-class kind of piece. Um, something a little bit on the, the next level up above of what we were originally going for with this box. But the thing about this, and one of the things that, that is an X factor and makes it interesting was I wasn't trying to get people to go out and buy a new knife just to do this. You know, and so you might see like, yeah, the, the 40 to $50 range is something that I was um, shooting for. But, you know, if you don't want to go out and spend 40 to $50 on a knife and you have something that's a little bit more expensive or, you know, a little bit more budget, that's great. That's, that's not an issue whatsoever. And that is, um, you know, something we didn't really discuss all that much with the people involved, but they sort of took it upon themselves to figure that out. And, you know, you can see just from some of the knives that were put in that, um, you know, 40 to $50 was definitely just a guideline and not a, uh, a rule. But with this knife, uh, I don't know much about it, and I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to learn, and so, yeah, definitely stay tuned because this will be showing up on the channel again. What I can tell you is that I recently modded a, um, a Kaiser Uprising, and this is pretty similar just in size and, and shape to that, so, and it feels like a really good quality piece. So, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to check this out and learn more about Bastion Knives. Here's the box. So there it is. All right, guys, and I'll bring in all five of the knives that I got back just one more time. If I can find them on the table real quick. So there's that HK Soldat. Here is the, the Rake, the CRKT, and then we'll slide the real steel in right here at the top. There we go. That's all five of them, the ones that I got back in exchange for the five I sent out. Overall, I'm thrilled with this. I think it was a great experience. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do it again and and sort of clean up some of the uh, the parameters and yeah, get it going on. Like I said, a a larger stage. So stay tuned for that. That will be happening relatively soon. But yeah, any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. One last time, my thanks to everyone involved. You guys were awesome. Uh, check them out down below as well. All right. 
So I will talk with you soon. Have a good one and take care.